our Australian viewers and, and, and most of our audience here, 75, 80% of it is Australian, uh, would have noticed today, Simon, on uh, our mainstream <coughs> uh, Monday morning news that some 830 odd businesses uh, collapsed in Australia last, uh, sorry, in March, we're now in May, um, in March, 830 odd businesses, which is astonishing given that it's a small country and have been very heavily subsidized during COVID. And they had uh, a particular restaurateur on and uh, he'd owned some 15 restaurants and was explaining that it was getting more and more difficult and that, that the spring back, the bounce back that they were expecting post COVID simply hasn't come. And that's mainly because of uh, interest rates going up and the, uh, the disposable income has uh, dropped immensely in Australia. But my point around that is this, and I made the point to my wife that um, we are a capitalist country and we turned socialist by design during COVID where the money was literally printed and handed out for people to actually stay home. Now the bounce back has been that it's become very, very hard in this country to find uh, employees and to keep them. Why would that be the case when everyone is desperate? Should it be that employment's easy? It certainly isn't. I've applied for jobs uh, as an exercise and as a necessity and don't get callbacks despite being more than qualified for particular jobs and can't work out why it is that this anomaly is going on. So then we get into a situation that there are now calls in Australia if it's businesses is collapsing for the government yet again to bail out these businesses. So we have a mentality here in Australia that the people don't really want to work in a capitalist situation and expect to be subsidised in a new socialist environment. What I'm trying to say is that we're finding that in the West, it's becoming increasingly obvious that people don't want to work the way that we used to work in the past and sounds very conservative and very, very old school in all of it. But a capitalist system thrives on the fact that people want to contribute and be rewarded for contribution. And if you say that it doesn't work and then to replace it with a socialist system, it becomes very, very obvious that the government is meant to stand in take over the running of said businesses, scrap the ones that don't work, and therefore prop the system up. Now that just layers a whole new layer of bureaucracy, highly paid bureaucrats getting paid the six uh, figure salaries to run these businesses, and the money dries up either way. If you don't work, capitalism doesn't work, and if you don't wanna work, socialism isn't gonna work at all, and yet here we are, China, a communist country, embracing capitalism and thriving. To me, it seems obvious, but the West, I don't know what's going on. It seems that half the population just doesn't want to contribute anymore. Simon, have you got any thoughts on all of that? Yes, well, I would say that part of it is a direct plan to try and roll out the universal basic income. Mm, we'll so uh, that that is, um, if you have lower participation, labor participation rates, then that's extremely helpful in achieving that. The other thing is, is what um, um, Edward Dowd has um, done a lot of statistical analysis on. He's that chap based in um, Hawaii, who you often see on um, right-wing media in the United States, Take, um, saying how many people have now registered and qualified um, for disability benefits because they've mm. had very severe adverse reactions to some of the medications that were promoted very heavily in Australia and mm. um, the United States over the last couple of years. So um, that has driven millions and millions of people out of the labor force and they're literally um, sitting at home disabled even though they would wish to be working if they could. Mm. And then you've had the, the general trend that a lot of people found that um, um, they could homeschool. Mm. So a lot of mothers in particular decided that actually homeschooling was very, very attractive. So that reduced the female participation rate. And then a lot of other people decided that they really actually hated serving individual people face to face in the retail and um, kind of restaurant sector. And so they decided that if they could possibly get any kind of job working from home where they didn't have to commute an hour each way, mm. that was also quite attractive. And I do think that in many cities, um, you've still got people who are driving around with their mask on and their windows up. Um, irrespective of any real health risk. And mm. those people are still fairly reluctant to go into a restaurant with two or 300 people. Mm. So th there's a lot of headwinds to go against in the service sector. That's what, like, kind of five particular issues that I've um, just described there. And so that's the problem that you've got. On, on the flip side, in terms of 
costs of operating a business, um, don't think you've got two things. You've had, um, as the forerunner of the digital identity, um, directors of Australian companies had to provide every aspect of their life online mm. because the government figured that if they could force the directors to do that, then the directors would force all of their employees to do that when they inevitably try and make the digital identity mandatory. So that's been a big issue. A lot of people have decided, I don't want to do that amount of um, privacy violations just mm. to be allowed to run a business. And they've literally gone from being business owners to being employees of other businesses. So that's part of the reason why a lot of businesses have closed down. The other reason is, of course, the energy costs. Mm. You know, not only have people had their disposable income reduced because their mortgage and monthly um, payments have gone up, but their uh, electricity and um, gas bills have gone up hugely. And yeah. so exactly like you said, people are now having to get store brand food rather than luxury brand food. And they're having to cook at home rather than go out. And they have to sit and watch Netflix rather than going to the big screen cinema. Mm. And so all of those are once again... Um, you know, driving the ultimate goal of the International Energy Agency and the WEF for people to work at home as much as possible and to minimise their carbon footprint. But that doesn't benefit the service sector very well. Certainly doesn't. I tell you what, if you've even tried to go to the cinema lately, my local cinema has two films playing at a time and one um, international subtitled film like a, a Tamil film or, or, or something like that in a major Hoyts entertainment that used to have six or eight films playing it at once. I don't know what's happened to the entire um, cinema industry in Hollywood. I don't know where it's gone in all of this. Well, Hollywood is still making movies. Um, a lot of them go very quickly onto pay-per-view, though, whether it's mm. Amazon or, or Netflix or Hulu mm. or, or something else like that. But and the, China's still knocking out plenty of um, plenty of movies as well. That they've just they've just put out one, um, which is supposed to be the Chinese version of Top Gun, yeah. <laughs> which I haven't which I haven't seen yet, not with any subtitles anyway. Um, wow. But that'll that'll be interesting to see. Supposedly, that's got very uh, very strong reviews, but. You know, it's 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 a huge kind of like shift in 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 the functioning mm. of the Australian economy. And mm. as they sh shut down, what is it, Littlewood, that um, power plant that the um, Australian government seems. Oh, uh, the L Liddell, yeah, power plant has now yeah, closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Amazing. So yeah. you know, rates are going to go up more on that. We've got a five-year gap between you know that reliable source of power going and intermittent sources um, being put in place supposedly with giant batteries to try and, you know, store the solar during the day and pump it out during the night and stuff. But, you know, you lose an enormous amount of power kind mm. of like converting mm. that solar feed into mm. the right kind of input for the battery. And then when you kind of like take the power out and transform it again, you're talking about 50% power losses and efficiency each time yeah. you do that. So you go from like 100% to 25% before it's even into your appliance, mm. it, it just it seems absurd. I, mean, I, I was looking today, bear in mind that the national grid is intended to be completely degasified by um, 2035. So no natural gas at all in Britain. So you can't, won't be thrown a gas stove, can't have a gas boiler for hot water. So that's the end of every Asian restaurant that was ever created in 2035 in Europe. In, no no, no okay. more. No, walks will be banned as well, mm, yeah. right? And um, and uh, today at noon UK time, so when I woke up in Florida, um, the UK, their power source was 46% natural gas. Wow. And yet in 12 years, that's going to be zero every single day. 